Today's hunting episode of Quick Dick is brought to you by Mandaco. Hey, if you're down in uh, that Kentucky area for the National Farm Machinery Show, I'm going to be there. That's right. You heard me. You can catch me at the Mandaco booth, booth 3466 in the West Hall. I'm going to be there the 15th and 16th from 11 till 2 daily. Come on down. Say hi. Bring your baby. I'll sign it. Quick Dick McDick coming to you from Saskatchewan here today. Everyone's like, Quick Dick, where you been? Well, I've been on the road doing comedy shows, having a hell of a good time out here. Like take today, for example, I'm at the Bruce Hotel, which is a pretty awesome place in Bruce, Alberta. But I'm going to get an upload done for you guys before I go and do this comedy show here tonight. See, I had my stuff together in November when I was deer hunting. So why don't we do something a little bit different? So what we're going to do this week is I'm going to take you back to November and we are going to go deer hunting. I don't know if you know this or not, but Saskatchewan is home to some of the best white-tailed deer hunting land that exists. So why do we hunt? Well, first of all, to fill the deep freeze. Second of all, I enjoy doing it. It's a sport. It's a good way to get outside. Third reason is you have to control the population of white-tailed deer, mule deer, moose, and elk. Because if you get too many of them running around, they can get infected with diseases. And then it spreads through all of them. And they can die some pretty slow, horrible deaths. If they're overpopulated, they can overrun a lot of our crops and eat our feed that we have stocked for cattle for the wintertime. And another reason you need to try and keep that population down a little bit is because... Those little bastards will wind up all over the highway and you'll be driving home in the middle of the night one night and you'll completely trash the go-to-town truck by hitting one of the pricks on the highway. So what do you say? Want to come on a deer hunt with me? She's walking time. Okay, guys, I'm not going to talk while I'm walking in. I'll pick you up at the blind. All right, we made her into the blind. It's an hour before shooting time. We're just going to sit here and see what comes in. Shooting time. Yes, that's right. I have two blinds and I bait. To be honest, spend all year baiting these pricks. They eat the peas that had planted around the bush and they eat our hay and they eat everything else. So it's only fair for me to feed them and harvest one of them. Okay, if you like it, great. If not, I don't care. Okay, it's 10. I gotta go pick up some mineral tubs and deliver some hay to somebody. I'll see that one dope. So, I'm gonna go check my other bait on my way back to the truck. I will try this later today. Shit. 
It's all right, I got a better feeling about this afternoon. I'm gonna get some shit done. I'll come back out later. Okay, so we're back and it's 3 p.m. It could take me about 30 minutes to get into the blind. And we'll see if we can see our big boy here. Okay, we're back on the blind. It's 3.45. Got maybe two hours of shooting time left here, so let's see if anything comes in. He's an alternate this season. If it was the last day, I would have took him. But we're gonna wait. All right. It's 21 below. We have one hour of shoot time left. I really have to take a dump. But I'm not going to. Pray for me. Everyone just eats for free around here. Shit, don't worry. Tomorrow's another day. Actually, it's gonna be Sunday. I gotta go do a show in Nippowin and then one in Raymore. So Sunday will be another day. We'll pick up that. The most important thing that my dad ever taught me was that the world is your bathroom. <laughs> Okay, now obviously I couldn't video myself shooting the prick, but you get the idea, right? So, fast forward to after I pull the trigger. Holy fuck, he's down. I'll just give him a second to make sure he's gonna sit. Six mil Ruger. 
what a gun. <laughs> he came in, there was a doe come in with him. He was on her. And then she buggered off. Dropped him right where he stood. One shot, right through the heart. He's done. Okay, I don't know how much YouTube's gonna let me show, but we got him field dressed out here. Uh, gonna go grab the truck here now, and we'll load him up, and we'll go hang him and skin him. Hell yeah. We got him home here, just gonna hang him and skin him out here quick. I know it's not Morty. Morty's broke down right now, so I had to use the go-to-town truck, which is turning into not a go-to-town truck at all lately. Not much sooner now. I'm just gonna skin him out here quick, and uh, I won't show that on YouTube, because everyone will probably get all pissed at me, and uh, they've probably taken this video down already, so uh, I'll be right back. Done. Go hang him outside. All right, so then you gotta let him hang for a couple of days, all right? Now I do that out in the machine shed on the front loader of the 7520, but when you get back home that night, there's one very important thing that you need to do with the liver of the deer. Okay, first things first, we're gonna get home. You gotta eat the liver. It's just got that little layer of membrane on there. We're just gonna peel that off of there. Super easy. Now that is a nice looking liver. We're just gonna slice that sucker up. Real nice. Okay, now lots of people do this however they want kind of thing, but what I like to do is I'll cut that liver, I'll chuck it in a bowl of milk, just cover it up a little bit. Sometimes I eat it straight out of the deer, sometimes I don't, but this is gonna be, it's gonna be super good. It's gonna take, if you're worried about the gamey taste of liver, this is just gonna take some of it out of it a little bit. So we got just liver, sliced it up, covered in milk, and I'm gonna give it just a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge. It's that easy. Okay, so we're back. It's the next night here now. It's snowing like crazy outside. It's liver time. So all I've done here is I just taken some of it out of the milk, cubed it up, got some onions and some garlic here, got the cast iron skillet rolling on the stove. We're just gonna cook. Y'all know me, I'm a big fan of good old cowboy thunder here. Oh yeah, a little bit of seasoning, a little bit. Nothing too crazy. We'll let that cook up a little more, then we'll get some onions yes. in there. Garlic, go, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And super good for you too. <laughs> I usually hang them for three or four days and then it's time to debone them. And there's one special guy you bring in for that operation. Always call the professionals in. Now I saved the back straps, tenderloins, and a couple of roasts, and the rest of that bugger gets ground. And you better believe that there's gonna be an obscene amount of sausage being made. Looking forward to doing that upload as well. And a big shout out to Aaron at uh, Coraline Sporting Goods in Dawson Creek, BC, and the whole crew there. If you need firearms or if you need outdoor gear, they're the ones you want to talk to. It's Quick Dick McDick signing off reminding you, nothing goes better with the cold Saskatchewan beer than some sausage that you made after you harvested your deer. Catch you next time. Thank you.